guys. So, I am coming to you guys this evening with a wee bit of skincare. I've already gone through, like, the vast majority of it. I'm just finishing off with, like, my serums and moisturizers. I just wanted to, like, kind of give you guys my testimony. Um, it's always like, why I believe in God? So, yeah. Um, where do I start? <laughs> um, so, basically, um, my testimony for like what really um, signed, sealed, and delivered my faith in God started in, I want to say 2019. So I got baptized when I was a kid because um, I had been in church for like most of my life. Um, and whenever I would go up to the front, they were always like, you know, God has a call on your life. Um, you meant to do like great things, but they would never tell me what it was, honey. <laughs> still wondering still wondering but I guess you know um that's for God to know and me to find out clearly um so yeah that's just what it was so in um in 2019 I was in like a really bad way <laughs> I was living a very much um worldly life you know um yeah I was just like deep 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 in the world so it was this one particular day, um, what happened? It was this one particular day I went to my job and um, where I was working at the time, I like was basically working for tips. Um, and so on this particular occasion, like I was like in desperate need of money and I did not get any. Um, so I left work and I had the worst kind of attitude like I'm talking about um a bad bad attitude um so <laughs> I was speeding um so at the time I had a little two-door coupe car and I was riding with a friend of mine who also had made like no money at work and um and so like I said, I was just taking her home. I stopped by my mom's house and something, when I stopped by to see my mom, something set me off even more when I went to see her. I can't really remember what it was, but I just remember like, I was irritated when I went there and I left there like even more irritated than when I arrived. Um, what's wrong, Snoop? You wanna sit up? So yeah, I left even more irritated than when I'd arrived. And so I left and I went through the neighborhood. And when I was going through the neighborhood, um, I ended up just like speeding. Um, I sped off and I went through a particular part of the neighborhood I'd never really had experience with the driving through before, driving like a wild banshee. Or um, as people would point it, I was driving like a uh, a bat out of hell. That's the best way to describe it, if we're being really honest. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm driving, speeding through this neighborhood, and then all of a sudden, um, I pull up to the stop sign, but I don't really want to stop. So, I slow down just a bit, just enough to, like, kind of peek both ways, and I see, like, it's people in the street. So, I try to, like, slow down a little bit more aggressively because the, the people in the street were kids. Um, there were kids in the street as well so yeah well I say all of this to say it was for naught um that slowing down that I tried to do it was way too late and so before I knew it there was like this divot in the road that I didn't see and that I did not know was there because again I had never been through that part of the neighborhood before so I hit the divot in the road and honey my car was airborne like I wish I was making this up. I wish I had a video of it, but I don't because this was like, I wouldn't have had a video of it no way because I was driving and this wasn't planned, right? Um, but yeah, so the people in the neighborhood, by the time the police got there, they said I was driving anywhere between 60 to 100 miles per hour through the neighborhood. I have no clue. I wasn't clocking it on the um, steering wheel. So who knows? It could have been 60, could have been 100, could have been 45. I, I don't know. Um, but once the car, like I said, was airborne, so then when it came back down, like, I lost all control of the vehicle, like, um, 
I was panicking because I had never really been in a situation like that before. So in my panic, I overcorrected the steering wheel. Then I overcorrected the steering wheel again. And then I hit and totaled two parked cars as well as my own car. So after the car wrecked, um, my friend, and I don't know whether this was like her reality or whether she was putting on for money, but she was sitting in the car in like a state of shock and she wouldn't answer me. Um, and she wouldn't get out or whatever the case may have been and neither one of us had a seatbelt on Let's talk about that too. Neither one of us had a seatbelt on and nobody went through the windshield at that speed After all of what we did because I guess I landed in a ditch um, After hitting two parked cars and totaling both of those cars um, And not even two parked cars. It was two trucks like an SUV and a pickup or something Look, you're killing me, babe can you find something else to play with? You got so much stuff right there to mess with. Um, so, yeah. So, then after I got out the car, uh, I was talking to people in the neighborhood. And then, all of a sudden, my car, like, it started smoking. So, I thought it was going to, like, blow up. So, everybody kind of started backing further and further away. Myself included. Um, and so, what ended up happening is that, like, um... The car continued to smoke. I don't know what happened, how the fire went out, but eventually it stopped smoking, I think, or either they put out the fire. I don't I don't really remember all of that. I just remember the car, um, like I said, it looked like it was going to catch flames and blow up. So the next day, I went to the um, to the, the tow yard to pick up my car. Or not to pick up my car, but to get stuff out of my car. Um, because in all of that, I was not thinking about retrieving. Oh, these are important things to me. I wasn't thinking about any of that. So, um, so the next day I went and I went to go get my stuff. Now, mind y'all, I told y'all the car was about to like <laughs> blow up. So it was smoke all over literally everything in the car. Now, I wish I had a video of this. This is something I could have if I was in like the frame of mind to take the video, had the video. But literally everything in that car was covered in smoke except for my white Bible. The Bible was pristine, not a drop of smoke on it. I still, to, that, to this day, have that Bible. And I feel like um, the Bible was a gift from somebody who was, like, real heavy in the church. And I was getting heavy into my church um, myself at the time, despite my living, like, a pretty worldly life. God was calling me back to the church. So that day, I feel like, um, but for God... I would not have made it out of that car. That girl would have made it out of the car. My whole life would have been radically different. I could have hit somebody's child. I could have been in jail for, like, manslaughter. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, that's just kind of what just sealed my belief in God. Like I said, it was, like, the next day and literally everything in that car but the Bible. And, like I said, the all-white Bible was covered in smoke. And I just could not fathom for the life of me how that is the only thing that did not get covered in smoke. And it was sitting right there on top. I felt that. I just felt the spirit of God just now. But, um, oh, I want to cry thinking about that. It's just, yeah, that was my, um, that's what sealed it for me. And so, yeah, I just kind of never looked back after that. And so it's been God for me and me for God ever since then. Um, and I have a couple other stories that kind of sealed my faith as well. But we'll get into those later on. So, that's my testimony, and yeah, I hope this helps somebody. So 